Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. Much love to you people out there. We busted through 500 likes, and now we're going for 600. And one day we're going to see 1,000, right? First, we were talking 47 BTC. No one listened except you. Then we were talking 52 BTC, and then no one listened except you. And now we're going to go for the moonshot. NFA, no joke, because token metrics, the AI and the humans are all lining up. And if you're a Cardano fan, don't go anywhere. All right, let's say hello to everyone on the stream. We have Anaheim, Norway, welcome. Okay, Fernando, okay, much love from East Tennessee. Christy is a Cardano fan. Welcome to the Cardano fans. Algeria, London, Sweden, Raymond, hello. Okay, Monica from Poland, welcome. Sao Paulo, Brazil, Reese, okay. New York City, Canada, Maryland, hello to you. All right, we have Sweden, Cincinnati, Alabama, roll tide, okay. India up late at night. Somebody coming from the moon. Love it. Okay. Michigan. Oh, more Cardano people. Belgium. Hi there. Okay. Now, I can't unmarry Dot. You know what, Fernando? Don't. Don't do it. Stay with Dot. We'll tell you why. Nigeria, Sweden, Dubai. If you've been suffering in Cardano, Solana and Dot, I got some news for you. So let's jump into your market update. Getting paid to be a pig. Old Wall Street phrase, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. That's kind of referring to that you should take profits when you can, and you should. But there's a time and a place where the market transitions from consolidation to trend. Are we at that point? Are we at the point where you're no longer paid to sell resistance, you're paid to hold your positions? Paid to be a pig. Normally I would tell you don't be a pig, but things are changing. Let's talk about macro quickly. So here comes macro rapid fire, okay. Bond yields, interest rates, too high. Inflation hysteria, too high. 10 you know, government bond ETFs to mark bottoms. So rates too high, bottom prices, uh, bond market prices too low. Okay. What hurts crypto? Higher rates. Okay. Why is crypto moving? Well, because maybe interest rates are overdone. Maybe Fed fear has reached its temporary limit. Doesn't have to be very long for crypto to just move. The new moon is different, right? The, the moon is 44 to 57 or 44 to 52, but we'll take it versus nine weeks of shittiness that we've had to tolerate. So inflation hysteria overdone. Dollar, UUP. 
an ETF in stocks that tracks the dollar index. So UUP is up. when the dollar goes up, UUP goes up monthly chart. Okay. April will be a nine top possibly at resistance. So dollar toppy at resistance. Maybe there's one more dollar up move. You know what? Who cares? That would probably be a dip in crypto, which at this point would be welcome. So rates too high, inflation hysteria too high, dollar too high. What does that mean? Well, we have this and we have this. What's this? Oh, wait a minute. Is this crypto too low? Wait a minute. Is crypto too low? Fuck yeah, it is. Excuse me. Commodities, physical commodities. Wheat, nickel, oil. Okay, I get it. War, it's bad. Could get worse. That's later. CRB index, older, older than your dad. Okay. <laughs> An index that follows commodities. All right, is reaching the end of a parabolic ascent. So there's going to be a new high. Why does this matter? Crypto is a digital commodity. It's regulated by the CFTC because of the Bitcoin futures contract. Crypto is scarce computer code. Wheat is a scarce resource. It's food. Now you can't eat Bitcoin, but you can buy bread with it. Or you could keep it in your account to hedge against inflation. MyCrypto.com Visa card came in today. They're not a sponsor. They don't have to be. If you don't have crypto based purchasing power, then you're walking around with a sign on that says, please erase me from the earth. So if commodities are up and commodities are parabolic and crypto is a commodity and has done nothing, then what's crypto going to do? Sit and do nothing or follow the rest of commodities. So let's review. Interest rates too high. Inflation hysteria too high. Okay. Dollar topping. Okay. And commodities, too physical commodities, way too ahead of digital commodities. Matter of fact, physical commodities might stop, although I'm not sure about oil. But crypto has got to catch up to the commodity complex. Okay. Let's say you don't understand any of that. Okay. Don't worry about it. Galaxy Digital, crypto hedge fund, monthly chart, monthly. Remember when I was saying getting paid to be a pig? Okay, the less smart ass way to say that is it may be time to start looking at weekly, monthly, and don't laugh, even quarterly charts. Like for example, example, I, it's, this is not the chart, but on a quarterly basis, going back to December of last year, Galaxy Digital is now unchanged. So it's like Galaxy Digital unchanged for Q1 as of right now, Thank you for coming in. Starting over. Meanwhile, look at the monthly chart. Okay, hidden pivot work. It's above 21. The upside target's 43. Where is crypto if Galaxy goes back to its high? Where's ETH? Where's Bitcoin? Where's Cardano? Where's Polkadot? Polkadot's half what it was. Nobody wants to buy the future of money and nobody wants to buy layer ones. And even if they do, they're too scared to do it, right? Everyone's Googling Solana. Everyone's like, oh, damn, I missed Solana. Yeah, you maybe you did, or maybe you didn't. You know, if Kraken thinks Solana's going to 600 and Solana is at 100 and the VCs are done selling, remember, they've been puking that out for nine weeks. So we'll get to later where the momentum is. Is it? Better momentum in Bitcoin, Cardano, or Solana. Don't go anywhere. And don't forget Polkadot. Okay, Bitcoin, to state the obvious, right? Support was at 40. Williams momentum indicators all knifing up higher. 47,200 minimum. Bitcoin's the future of money. Bitcoin is a commodity. Don't make me say it again. Axis infinity, Axie infinity. Now, this is already up a lot, I know. Okay. Now, if you have tokenmetrics.com, right, you would have noticed that after yesterday's rally, like say you were in Europe or Asia, 
Okay, when these indices updated, you would have noticed that Axie would have showed up in the index. So these indices are picking up the moonshots as they get started. All right. Wrapped big. This is a Coinbase daily index. Okay. Bitcoin accounts for almost 50% of the index right now. So if Bitcoin just, I don't know, goes up five or $6,000, it's going to take Polkadot with it, I think. Because Polkadot is showing up in the indices. The indices are our AI and machine learning, picking out the best stuff, putting it in a group and saying for today or this week, these are the trades. And if something comes in day after day after day, you know, that's an epic uptrend. Simple as that. Okay. If you had a token metric subscription a week ago, it has paid for itself in Bitcoin alone. Now back to the charts. Okay. Bitcoin weekly, 47,500. ETH, the blue line is a metric for inflation. Okay. So what the bond market requires to be compensated for inflation, it's called a break even. The orange line is Ethereum in the equity market, ETHE. Every time the inflation expectation makes a new high, ETH makes a new high. So why is ETH at 3000? It's as simple as that. And that's the market update. We'll see you next week. No, no I'm kidding. Okay. Somebody on Twitter, a guy I respect said that what they call the merge rally in ETH is the equivalent of three Bitcoin halvings. Now, if you, if that's right, if that's even remotely right. Or if that talk is justified, let's put it that way. Let's say it's an intelligent idea with ETH this cheap. Where's ETH going? Don't make me say it again. I love you guys. Not you, not you, just the royal you, right? It's like, wow. 25% off token metrics. Token metrics, AI indices, token metrics, visual trends indicators are beeping off the hook by signals in big cryptos every day. And you can set alerts. So you can say, hey, has my crypto beeped bullish yet? WIC 25 all for 25% any plan for women in crypto month, which has exactly seven days left to it. Think about it. All right. The AI breaks things down by exchange. Now the, for our premium group members, you get things like this. We take 6,000 cryptos. We look at the AI ranking for those 6,000 cryptos and we aggregate that into one bullish or bearish signal, one. And we plot it on total crypto market cap. So it got you out in November and it just went green. And you're getting follow through. So you get these signals from momentum indicators and you're getting follow through. Now, let me ask you this. Seriously, do you think token metrics, even though we are unique, do you think we're the only ones who have these type of indicators for momentum? Like, I'm pretty sure no one has anything like this, but do you think the big hedge funds have this stuff? The commodity trading advisors, the investment banks, the huge players in the market? <clears throat> of course they do, right? Now, if our stuff's beeping, their stuff's beeping. So this is why I'm saying, hey, is it time to huddle? Is it time to be kind of a pig? Just to let it ride. Are, are you, I mean, you and me are looking at this, but how many other people are looking at it who have huge purchasing power in this market? And they may be underweight, right? They may have been chasing physical commodities, or they may have gotten chopped up in equities. So the market is now offering them a mo trade that they can't resist. One of the reasons to take the signal is that Bitcoin's like quantitative ranking on a daily and weekly basis is rising. So Bitcoin went bullish two days ago where you would have made money. And it's as you get follow through, 
Bitcoin can continue to go higher. Cardano. Cardano. Now, obviously, a big update in Cardano. Cardano, can it go higher? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because this bullish signal looks just like the pre-Bitboy bullish signal back in July of last year, where Cardano just went straight up. So if they want to take it up, they can take it up. Right? I mean, Cardano's got this huge following of people. Okay? BitBoy is going to be at NFT Los Angeles. So what do you think guys like him and the Cardano fans are going to do? Well, if the short sellers can't cap Cardano, they're just going to moon it. Or they could moon it. I mean, if Ethan's at 5000 where's Cardano? Or if Cardano's at $1.50, where's ETH? Either way, I'm cool. The bottom line is, you need to know, you need to know when these momentum signals go off because you ain't the only one looking at it. And he who hesitates or she who hesitates is lost. Yeah, you want to buy dips if you can, but notice I said that yesterday and how shallow was the dip? Like you maybe had one little dip this morning and one shitty dip last night and that was it. And they're waiting for it. Who's waiting for it? People looking at this, right? Polka dot. Everyone's sleeping on polka dot. Everyone's like, oh my God, I'm so scared to get long polka dot. Why? Polka dot was at 50. Now it's at 20. It's interoperability. Cosmos looks bullish. Why is no one talking about polka dot? Our AI is picking up polka dot and it hasn't rallied yet. And one thing I love about our AI is, yes, it does get you on Mo trades, like it does get you on Bitcoin. I appreciate that because, you know, I don't know if I should be dumping it at the top end of the range or going with it. So I talked to our quant guys and they're like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're math. I mean, nobody is, they don't have a crystal ball, but they're like, yeah, we like this green, we like this green signal. So what about Polkadot, right? What if Cardano and Polkadot start mooning? Where's the rest of the market? Everybody gave up on Solana. Everybody gave up on Polkadot. I mean, BitBoy was doing videos. I saw the video. Is Cardano dead? <laughs> of course it wasn't dead, right? Or they thought it was dead at 75. I said, don't sell it at 75. It went to a dollar. I'm like, well, okay, I don't know if I want to buy it at a dollar. And then it continued to go up. So now it's time to change my mind based on what? My guesswork? No. The AI. Here's Cardano on a weekly chart. We discussed this yesterday. So if Mo is changing in Cardano, it'll probably attack $1.49. So if you're a Cardano maximalist and you miss the trade, maybe you haven't missed the trade. The trade is probably an attack of $1.49. Because to me, that's the make it or break it levels to find out whether or not this is like kind of a corrective rally in Cardano or whether this is like the mega moonshot rally. Because remember, all the hedge funds, all these, they all hate it. They don't like it. They think it's overvalued, underutilized. I'm a chart guy, right? I'm a YouTube chart guy. So I just read the charts and I leave the fundamentals of whether it's useful or not useful to be debated by somebody else. But the fact of the matter is, you know, there's a huge number of people who like it. There's a huge number of people who probably want to add to their positions. Because after all, if you missed Cardano the first time up, here's your chance. So some people say it's not worth anything. Some people think it's the greatest thing ever. And the people who think it's the greatest thing ever went out. Okay. The people who hate it are going to have to cover. That's why I think 149 is possible. As soon as this thing goes up, everyone's talking about shorting it. I don't think you short it when momentum's going green on token metrics. Now, let's talk about a shift in perspective using Aave. Okay. So we watched the give up trade in this. We had people call in repeatedly. It was painful to watch. Aave bounced hard from 115 to 167. Time to take profits, right? Guess what? Aave continued to go up. 
Now, if you look at this on a tactical chart, it's probably overbought. But we're getting to the point where a shift from hourly and 90 minute starts to move towards daily and weekly. On a weekly basis in Ave, nothing has happened. This is like the ninth or 10th week of Ave doing nothing. Nothing. Okay. So if Ave wakes up, if the whole crypto, let's call it something different. What about the digital asset space? How in God's name can monkey market, AKA equities, be as close to their all time high as it is with crypto at these levels? Impossible. So either equities have to come off because the war is worse than we think, or crypto's got to go up. It's that simple. Okay, here is Ave on the visual trends indicator from token metrics. Okay, so you get out of Ave. Is it overdone? Well, I mean, when Ave has a bullish signal, all right, sometimes it has not followed through, right? And then it has slumped. Now, what happens if Ave starts to follow through? That's an indication that the momentum indicator that the AI is correct. So the higher it goes, the higher it can go. And if it doesn't go higher after these green signals, yeah, you can give it some time, but if you start to see positive action over the weekend, if Putin comes out with his Sunday wreck the market, wreck the equity market stunt, and it doesn't work, it's gone. Now, of course, he's going to do that. They're burning documents at the, uh, you know, at the Russian embassy in Poland. So don't kid yourself. Bad stuff's out there, but that's all the more reason to make the money now. So not investment advice, but as I have been saying over and over and over, if you're going to make money being long crypto, do it now. Solana, let's talk about it. Hey, Bill, where's the green dot on Solana? Well, it hasn't shown up yet. Hasn't showed up yet. Now, here's a fun little game. What happens if we're going into a bull market? Okay, what happens? Now, if we're going into a bull market, the question is, has your coin gone green yet? Well, for Solana, not yet. But that makes me wonder, well, gee, what happens if Solana, like everything else, goes mo and then goes green? So you might get the dip, but then it might go. So is there a game afoot where you want to pay close attention to what's gone green and what hasn't gone green yet? Think about it. Okay. So whichever way you're going, okay, if you're looking at this, I'm not saying necessarily front run the green signal, but what I am saying is the higher it goes, okay, the more likely it is that the momentum crowd jumps in. There has been nothing positive to say about Solana or Polkadot from a chart point of view. Now, what happens if you wake up one day and there is, and the future of money trade is rallying and Bitcoin is rallying? Solana, what is it? It's a computer network. It's a digital commodity or a tech stock, whatever, right? Why is it sitting down here? Why is Web2 close to its high and Web3 is destroyed? And that is the market update. All right. So I just went off. I saw everybody commenting. Okay. DeFi perp. Bill tells the story. Okay. You're right. They're going after DeFi 1.0. Sushi. Perp. Perp. Smoking. Okay. Perp. Derivatives exchange. Okay. What about XRP? Okay. The gain on my mic is way too hot. Let's check that. <laughs> All right. I think the gain on my mic is okay. I think I'm just too loud. Sorry. All right. XRP is okay. I've been charting XRP. If it holds above 80 cents, it's all right. Okay. The thing is, is XRP the future of money? Or is XRP a gamble on regulatory action? I would love 
to get ridiculously bullish XRP. But you got to get this government out of the way. You got to get this government case out of the way. Okay. DeFi 2.0 is my home. Okay. Let's get to the DeMarc work because I know that y'all are just blowing up at the mere thought of it. And we're going to do some token metrics stuff too, because the time for token metrics is here. It's always time for token metrics, but when there's a trend starting, it is definitely time for token metrics. All right. Now let's go over this. Okay. So we had somebody call in for Tezos yesterday. They were new. Thank you for coming back. If it's the same person, I'm actually going to do Tezos first. So we give you some love. Okay, so here's Tezos on a 90 minute chart. Okay, topping signals were here. It dipped, people bought it. Good sign. Okay, four hour chart. Okay, I bet it's going to show something similar. Topping signal, okay, pressing resistance at 352. So for Cosmos to get moon boy ish, you've got to get above 362. Now let's skip that. Let's skip the daily and go right to the weekly. So intraday overbought, you've been paid to go with that. But if we're switching to trend, Tezos bounced off 289. There's a moving average at 351. And if it takes that out, it can just go, right? I mean, it can go to 453. One time somebody told me that test, uh, Tezos could be a test net for a digital euro. So, I mean, I know you're getting old waiting for this, but every single crypto that has been destroyed is going to look like Tezos. So maybe the exception is that you've got the DeMarc nine top on the daily chart. Now to throttle back the moon boyness, when you get a nine top, it can sometimes be a top like it was here. You got that one big thrust up, which killed everybody. And then they dropped it just like you got the nine bottom here and they killed it and brought it back. Now, if it's a trend, okay, the way that the mark work goes is one through nine is called the setup phase. Now in a range, that's all you get one through nine top one through nine bottom in a trend, you get one through nine. That's called setup. Then you get a harsh dip. Then you get countdown, which is one through 13, which is much more exciting. So if you get a dip in Tezos and people come in and buy it, then a major trend could be starting. And this is going to be true across all of crypto. So thank you for coming to the show. I wanted to give you some love on Tezos. Now let's talk about Luna. Because I know that people are like, wow, the market's mooning and Luna is not going. What is up with that? Okay. Now, Luna on a daily chart is consolidating on top of 87. Luna outperformed for a really long time. All right. And there were some negative momentum divergences on, say, the trading view chart. However, okay, this is the four hour chart of Luna. Note the 13 top and the nine top. Has it topped? No, has not. So when you start to look at these intraday charts, when we see topping signals that don't work, okay, that's a sign in the DeMarc universe to switch the perspective. So I don't see any reason why Luna can't turn around and attack 101. Right? I mean, if it's copacetic over the weekend and, and Putin can't blow it up Sunday night, Luna can go to 108 or 126. Okay. These are big levels off the weekly chart. Okay. You're in finance. Oh, you know, I just love me some DeFi 1.0. <laughs> That's just, I can't help it. You know what I'm saying? Like every time this stuff goes up, I'm like, oh my God, 
I can't believe how cheap it is, right? A nine bottoms, just like Ave, right? A nine bottom on the weekly chart. Everybody capitulates. Everybody gives up. Now look at this. Okay. Let's take the nine and the 13 signals out. Okay. Here's your finance. If you can see it one wave down two back up three, four, five, not exactly a textbook wave count, but I mean, if you just look at this, right, it was at 40,000 and now it's at 20, buy it or sell it. Seriously. Daily chart. Okay. The daily chart. Is there anything on this daily chart? No. Is there a 13, a nine? No, there's nothing. It's like, it's a blank slate. So what does that mean? That means the market can just create. It can just create. If it wants to start a new trend, it can. Our head of research describes this as a long-term hold. Let's go to ETH. Okay. 13 top, nine top, four hour chart, warning signal, warning signal. Did the market go down? No, no. Weekly. Eighth weekly taking out big moving averages at 3000. Okay. Simple and plain. D wave, right? ETH weekly. 2019 was the top of the one wave. March, 2020 was the bottom of the two wave at 86. The top of the three wave was November of last year at 4,600. The bottom of the four wave was January 23rd. After which ETH proceeded to bore you to death over the next eight weeks. So if it's one, two, three, four, wait, five, like, okay. Cody. Okay, this is all going to look this. I'm not saying I'll, I'll do it for you, but it's all going to look the same on the weekly charts, right? Right. Everything looks like it's coming off the bottom. This one has the nine bottom. Let's look at the intraday chart because I don't want you all, you know, I don't want you all FOMOing in. Okay. But again, here's the nine top and you get the dip and then it comes right back. There's a warning sign of volatility, but does that volatility mean it's going to go higher? You have to start asking yourself, you have to start asking yourself, self, what happens if this thing moons? Okay. So if you've been stuck with stuff, as long as you still believe in the stuff, okay, leave it. Okay. Now, if you're not long good stuff, then you might want to switch in. So Rune, as much as I like it, has outperformed massively. So sometimes when stuff outperforms, when the rest of the market goes up, it underperforms. So there's the 13 top in Rune with a warning signal. So maybe there's, you know, two or three days of corrective activity in Rune. Okay, if you look at the weekly, Rune has taken out resistance at 836. And if you shift your perspective, Rune has done nothing more than break out and make a return move. So if you see Rune at 836, and I just got done talking about the dip and Rune holds 836, well, then I have to leave it up to you as to what to do next. Okay. 
What do we think about Doge? Well, I guess the big question is, are meme coins a part of the future of money? What did I say the other day? Or what have I been saying about surprise rallies? That the stuff that people don't like can sometimes rally off the low. Now, Doge has not paid to be long in quite a while. And I don't know if Musk has the cred to move it anymore. Okay, so there's a nine top in Doge. It looks like people are selling it. But if buyers come back in, this thing can count down and go higher. I thought I saw something that said there was a huge buyer of Sheeb recently. Okay. Now, Sheeb is at a DeMarc resistance point at 2526. There's a nine top, people are selling. So, with these meme coins, right, there are higher quality stuff out there. And the real question is if you get the dip or it comes off today, do people want it and does it turn around and break out? If you see people want it, okay. Right. Okay. We have a lot of enthusiastic XRP fans out there. Let's talk about it. Okay. So again, all this stuff's the same nine top on the daily. The real question for XRP is what are the weeklies and monthlies look like? So the weekly chart, you need to break out above 92, but there's no sell signals on the weekly. Now, if you look at the monthly chart, again, you know, there's a warning here that you can get busy. So there's, there's a chance. There is a technical case for XRP. There's a technical case. So XRP is ready to go up. The question is, is there a catalyst for XRP to go up other than the fact that people like XRP? If a catalyst appears, XRP is going to make a new high, period. But the catalyst has to appear. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it has to be there. It's not going to go up by itself with the government sitting on top of it. So if you bet XRP, you're not betting charts. You are a little... But you're betting legal case. Okay, polka dot monthly, a green candle. Polka dot weekly. Okay. Green candle, not exciting to mark work. Daily chart, polka dot. Okay. I think this looks like the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Okay, I think the minimal upside target for this is 27. As long as our AI likes it, I say anything below 21 is probably a good, uh, is probably a good idea. Okay. H bar. Okay. So someone's selling H bar. around 22 cents. So the question is, will sellers run out of ammo? It's been green every day. There's the nine bottom. There's the green going in the other direction. So if you want to bet that H bar, the sellers are out of ammo. If they are out of ammo, it's probably going to go to either 23 or 28 cents. If you've been suffering in this, well, maybe your suffering is going to come to an end. You definitely have to give the market a chance. Retail always sells the first uptick. That's what we used to say in stocks when the market would bottom. I would not sell the first uptick, even if it's at resistance. I mean, at this point with the AI beeping, which of course you'll know about when you get what? A token metric subscription. Okay. Crypto.com daily chart. Okay, so there's the nine top yesterday. There is almost no dip and it's still green. So this looks like 50 cents. So let's go to 
token metrics and see see if it's flipped bullish yet not yet okay it has not flipped bullish yet okay but okay the token metrics daily grade is starting to rise. So as these coins, like if you look at this, cause we're working on giving you a chart where you can watch it day in and day out. But when you come to this page, right? Like obviously Crow on, on a longer term basis has gotten hammered. But as this daily grade starts to build, if you start seeing 70, 75, 80, right? That's a sign that momentum is picking up in your particular coin. And sometimes the grade can start moving while the coin is relatively stationary. Okay. Let's go back to the chat. Anon 11 says, buy Solana. Dash, do I dare look at it? Dash, the hidden box of Twinkies under the bed. The crypto I can't stop liking even though I should. Okay. So you get a rally, people sell it, a dip, people buy it. That's the daily chart. What does dash look like on a weekly chart? Okay. Coming off its lows, miserable, destroyed, trying to come back up. Token metrics. Token metrics, daily grade rising, weekly grade approaching 80. Oh, look, there's my green dot. Okay. Like when you get the green dot and then you get follow through, it's, a, it's good. Probably. Now the question is, do we have follow through? We don't know yet. And the big question is, where is your coin on tokenmetrics.com? Taz, hello. Near doing good. It is. Near is doing good. You know what? I think AVAX is next. I think the only thing that's holding AVAX back is that people are like getting nuclear bullish on ETH. So Near on a weekly is taking out an important moving average. And I don't know what stops Near if it, say, gets through like, I don't know, 13, 13 and a half. I mean, this thing is like a blockchain and every transaction is a blockchain unto itself. If I understand it correctly, right? There's like a whole lot of blue sky. I mean, yeah, there, there's resistance here. Okay. At 15 ish. Okay. But just because it stopped here, right? If it doesn't stop there, where's it going to go? In other words, this chart argues for a fundamental repricing of crypto. In other words, is crypto the future? Is the war over? I don't know. I don't know. But in the short term, who cares? Right? The question is, is this asset class priced properly versus everything else? The answer is hell no. Hell no. Okay, AVAX. Okay, so AVAX has to get above 9490. But this is starting to feel like the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Right? These coins can do this. Okay, so not particularly exciting, but AVAX is above this moving average system. So the DeMarc moving average system is smart. So let's kill all these numbers so you can see this cleanly. Here's the AVAX breakout. The trend goes up. It holds its support. It breaks the moving average system here, comes down, gets rejected again. And now what's it doing? It's doing that slow creep. So I know I made a joke out of the title that it's time to be a pig. All right. 
Now, there's a much, much wiser and subtler version. Is it time to look at any dip you can get? Maybe that's the question, right? Solana, Cardano, Avalanche, right? Get what dip you can. Because if this is right, it's a bird on a wire getting ready to fly. It's not bigger the base to hire in the space. So if you're sitting there on a moving average, which is at like roughly 80, so that's like this week's low. Now it's to the point where after it's rallied, sitting could be bullish. Because after nine weeks of sitting, you've been told that sitting is not bullish. Okay, somebody wants the Algorand monthly chart. All right. Okay, so so DeMarc just quit on me. Don't know what's up with that. Okay, it's coming back. It thinks it's coming back. Let's see if there's anything bold on Algo on token metrics. People in Algorand are like, please relieve my pain. <laughs> please make it stop. I get it. I get it. So the token metrics grades are not good. So the AI is not picking up on the Mo yet. Okay. Algo has worked pretty good. You know, some of these bearish signals have worked. The bullish signals have worked. It has not gone bullish yet. Now, should you be discouraged by that right now? I would say no. I think it's now it's time to ask yourself, what happens if my coin goes green? Now, if Bitcoin's at 47 and your coin hasn't gone green, then that's going to be the time to like recompute, right? That's going to be a whole different stream. That could be GTFO for the whole market, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okay, so Algorand on a weekly chart, just, you know, and let, let me put the DeMarc work back in. But again, this stuff, I, and I don't mind showing it, but you are just going to see crypto as an asset class across the board. So here's your nine bottom, right? And it's just going the other way. So what did I talk about before? Under-owned, under-appreciated, oversold, VCs liquidating, people giving up, retail despair. How many coins does that description fit? I don't know. Most of the good ones, to be perfectly honest. Okay. Yeah, by the way, please hit the like button. Okay. Okay. So J-Man says, Bill, there are bearish divergences all over the place. Okay. So let, let's just check that out to make sure that we're not like walking into a trap. So this is the 89 minute chart of ETH. Okay, so there is an argument that ETH is a little bit stretched out, but we've talked about this, right? We have talked about the fact that, you know, if you look at an 89 minute chart of ETH, right? Uh, maybe prices have made a big new high, but momentum indicators are even. Okay, if you look at Bitcoin and ETH, like if you look at 90 minute ETH, Okay, you know, there's a warning signal here and people are selling it, a possible five wave top. The question is, what kind of dip do you get? Yeah, I mean, all the short term stuff is overbought negative. And in the past, you have been paid to GTFO and buy it back 10% lower. Now, if we're still in that mode, that's what mode we're at. But the artificial intelligence suggests otherwise. All right. 
So, I mean, you know, I, if, if people want to trade the range, you can trade the range. Trade the range until it doesn't work anymore. Okay, API 3. Okay, so it's been basing. Okay, you've gotten the nice pop, but it hasn't done what it's done in the past. Let's look at the four hour chart. Okay, so in this case, sellers are still aggressive. Now, I'm not hating on anybody's altcoin here, but this is an example, all right, where you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, is this a coin that will moon in the future or has already mooned and is done? Now, looking at this on a four hour chart, this looks like something that is boring you to death. It could be giving you a dip. There's support at 486. So if you like API 3, go for it on a dip. Just remember that if you're right, it's the bigger the base, the higher in the space. And if it's wrong, it'll still do nothing. I mean, markets get addicted to certain things. When they're mooning, they keep mooning. When they're doing nothing, they can keep doing nothing until something changes. So if there's a catalyst for this, it's the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Okay, I'm checking, I'm checking for some of these smaller coins that people are asking for. Okay, Flip Burger, you're welcome. Have a good day. Okay, S-O-L-R. Okay, wow. Okay, so going to go outside the box here on this particular moonshot coin. The question is, will it keep mooning? That's the question. Okay. So in SOLR on the 15 minute bar chart. Okay. Even though this little method is a way to keep a, a shorter term time frame chart going. I would say if you can take out, if this thing could take out 0.418 and hold, then this rally has a shot at continuation. Now, if it doesn't, obviously there's been a lot of upside gratification. So if you're above 0.418, you can go above 54 cents. Okay. Anaheim, California, been sitting on BSV and ETC forever. Are they useless? Okay. What can I do with my coins? Okay, well, I know that Ethereum Classic has been mooning. All right. So this may have something to do with the Ethereum upgrade. I don't know. Okay, Ethereum Classic is taking out resistance at 47, and there is a nine top. Okay, so on one hand, you know, Ethereum Classic looks a little bit overbaked. Let's look at a weekly chart. Okay, if you look at the weekly chart, the real resistance here is at 56. So what I would tell you is, depending on where you were long this, if you've got like some sort of artificial euphoria here, okay, in Ethereum Classic, perhaps it's time to take the money if you don't believe in it. It sounds like you don't. You got to believe in what you own, okay? So if you get a massive moonshot like this in a coin that you don't believe in, take half off, not investment advice. I think the real level to focus on is going to be 65. So if Ethereum Classic puts in this nine top, pauses, and then keeps going, it's probably 65 minimum. Now, BSV, 
is likely a highly debatable coin. It's not in the DeMarc system. Okay, the question is, how many of these Bitcoin forks can be useful? Well, I don't have the answer to that, okay? But obviously, this whole theme about things that people hate going up is unfolding in BSV. So this thing is so far away from its moving average system. In other words, it has gotten smashed to such a degree that I don't know, you know, maybe this can go to a hundred, right? But you have to ask yourself, is this better than Bitcoin? I think that's what you have to ask. Ethereum classic kind of has its own speculative twist to it, but with BSV, is it better than Bitcoin or is it better than Bitcoin cash? I can't answer that from a fundamental point of view, but if you look at this chart, right? Okay, there was like a liquidity event here below 80. So I don't see any harm in giving this a chance, but I think there's probably a lot more upside in things like ETH. And you could get ETH to where you could have long-term staying power. In other words, if there's a bear market between May and October, where is BSV going to be? I mean, do you want to get caught holding these coins if Bitcoin goes to 52 and ETH goes to 5K and then it all turns over? So it's easy to talk about this stuff on a green day. You want to be asking yourself about positions. Okay, if it goes up and then it all goes red, do I want to hold this? The best time to make portfolio decisions is when it's going your way. Okay, somebody's asking for a KTN. Okay, so this is another one of these like give up trades. Right, where momentum indicators make a higher low as prices make lower lows. Now, frequently what can happen is either something like this does nothing or if there's a fundamental catalyst and you believe in it, then you wait to see if that happens. I don't think you want to get caught holding this if Bitcoin goes to 47 and you don't get any upside gratification. But if you're trapped in stuff like this, leave it. Not investment advice. Give it a chance. Taz wants a Cardano prediction. The Cardano prediction is 147. Why? Why not? Okay, it's a big level from one of my other forms of analysis. Okay. Okay, so it's like 164, 155. There's a 13 and a nine bottom and you're just now getting confirmation. So the DeMarc work is now officially declaring a reversal. So it's not, it, it's just starting if you look at the big picture. Okay. Sell and may and go away again in 2022. Yes, but people may have done all of that now. Like people have maybe said, okay, it's going to go down later. So I'm not going to buy now. Okay. Not, not an unreasonable assumption given that there's a war going on and inflation and all that other scary stuff. Okay. Sushi. I just can't hate it. I probably should. I just can't give up sushi. I mean, there's a 13 and a nine bottom on the weekly. I mean, it could go to 459, it could go to 698. 
Now on the daily chart, it may be overbought, maybe not. Let's check. Right. So there's the nine top. Okay. And now we're going to decide, right? So we decide, right? Normally, this is how it works. The DeMarc work counts a set of conditions. This is called the setup phase, one through nine. Okay. Now in a trend, if it's a trend, there'll be a counter trend move. So if it's been going up, there'll be a dip one or two days. If the dip holds and buyers come back in, you could be looking at a new trend that counts a certain set of conditions from one through 13. Now, when it goes down, okay, this is what it looks like when it goes down, right? This is almost like a case study, right? <laughs> Here's sushi one through nine coming off the January, 2021. No, the, yeah, no, the December 2021 top. So one through nine was December. Then you had one, two, three, four days of an uptick before it just all the way down to a 13. And then it just couldn't stop. It just couldn't stop blowing up to the point where everyone gave up on it. And if you were long sushi, you felt like an idiot. Every time you tried to get long sushi, you got stopped out. So who's long sushi? No one. No one. <laughs> How could you be? You got stopped out. You got hosed. You got killed. Who's long? Nobody. Okay. I mean, if sushi is above 354, okay, it's probably should be above 363. But if it's above 354, and dip buyers show up at that level, then that's where you can be like, okay, maybe something has changed here. Okay. Let's go layer ones. Oh, gala. You know, the metaverse has been kind to me and the metaverse has killed me. <laughs> the one thing that I said about the metaverse and NFTs is headed into NFT LA. Don't be short the metaverse. Don't. Okay. Like Decentraland weekly. Okay. Nice little trend line right at the low. Okay. No DeMarc work of consequence. Wide open skies. What is going to happen when BitBoy takes the stage at NFT LA? I'm in the group with them. Right. I mean, what, what happens if this Decentraland breaks out above 264? Look at this base. This base has been going on now since March, early March. You got an invasion base in Decentraland. Now, someone out there is going, shut up, Bill. That was not the question. The question was about Gala Games. I, I know. Okay. So Gala Games, right? Okay. Fundamentally overvalued, probably. All right, but this is like rounding bottom, right? It's not quite round yet, but I mean, I'm sure it's overbought on the short-term charts. So people are noting bullish divergences, but again, okay. There's the 13 top. There's the nine top. There's the dip. There was the dip after the nine top. It dipped three hours or, or 12 hours and came back. So, you know, here was the nine top, you came off. Okay, here was another nine top, you came off a little less. Here's another nine top. Well, how much is it going to come off? It's making higher lows. You're going to be short this in front of a convention? I'm not. Phantom. Another colossal thing people gave up on nine bottom going green this week. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. Look at this daily chart. Nothing right. Nine bottom. Everyone packs it in. Yeah. You got some DeMarc signals here, but I mean, seriously, this is either going to do nothing or go to a dollar 88. Probably overbought on the intraday chart, but the intraday chart is your friend. So there's resistance at 134. 
There's also resistance at 139. So Phantom has done well off the lows, so people will probably sell. And if they sell and people take it from them, right, again, what is it doing? It is making higher lows. It might be as simple as that. If it continues to make higher lows in the face of intraday sell signals, then it's time to shift over to the daily chart or the weekly chart. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you flexibility, right? I mean, it's like, okay, I don't want to buy the top end of the range. Okay. I mean, that, that literally, that's not a smart ass answer. It is okay. I mean, they're going to wait for a dip, right? Or I'm going to go with the breakout. Okay. So synthetics, obviously someone's sitting on this at 546. People are like, right, I'm selling synthetics. You know what? Nice rally. It went from three to five and a half. Goodbye. Okay. And what happens when everyone packs it in and gives up? Now, is this DeFi 1.0 stuff the best trade in the world? I don't know. Okay. But I do know this. This was the 13 bottom. And this was the calamitous give up trade from 10 all the way down here. And that to me looks like a breakout. I mean, can synthetics go back to where it was in September or August at 12? I don't know, but where is, actually maybe the better question is, where is synthetics if ETH is at 5K? Now, the one thing I will tell you is you better make sure that whatever altcoin you're in, okay, you better make sure in your mind there's a reason why it could beat ETH on the upside. Because it looks like ETH and BTC are about to go wild, particularly ETH, okay? Okay, SYS. Okay, so I've heard some interesting things about this. The chart is this square basing formation. So, you know, it has to get above resistance because every time it goes to 65 cents, everyone sells it. So the question is, are the sellers out of ammo? Okay, you had a 13 bottom, you're probably a day away from a nine top. If it moons, it can go to 90 cents. Okay, but this is the case of something that, you know, has to kind of like prove itself, right? Because the give up trade started at this old ceiling, right? Right here from this 2021 at 67 cents. So 67 cents was a takeoff point, a low, right? And that was the point where everyone just like gave up. So this has more work to do, but if you believed in it, there's no reason to get out yet. I mean, yes, it might go up and then dip, but if you've been suffering, which most likely everyone has been, right? Nobody calls up the show because their coin is mooning. I mean, sometimes we get that, but really most of the time people call up because they're like, oh my God, you know, is this ever going to come back? Which we have no problem helping you with. Okay. Steve says ETH will drag up the layer ones. Okay. Ireland, we appreciate you too. Okay, Cody, I know we did, but if people are asking for it, I I'd be love to have you. Okay, again, it's a nine top on the daily chart. All right, and the question is, will someone come in and buy a dip? If you look at the weekly, okay, it's a nine bottom, and it's just getting started. It could go to 42 cents. Every single old coin that we're going to go through is probably going to look just like this. The question is, should you be switching from the four hour chart to the one hour chart? I'm sorry, to the one week chart. Should you switch from trading to investing and hodling? How do you know the difference? The momentum indicators and in the AI signals from tokenmetrics.com. Like, yes, I work for the company. Yes, I have to do the commercials, but sometimes I look at y'all and be like, listen, this is, you gotta have it. That's it. You're gonna make money. If you're going to make money, you're going to make money now. You spend a little, you could make a lot. Okay, SLP weekly. 9 and 13 bottom, range trade, nothing happening, but a positive week. 
So is seven cents possible? Yes. But if you look at the daily chart, what do you get? Well, you get this odd sideways 13 top. Okay. So very weird, very weird. Okay. I would say if this is above, I don't know, it's not giving me the exact levels, but whatever today's low is, okay, if today's low in SLP acts as support, because if you don't see it below today's low, today is March 24th, midday, then there's a shot this thing could turn around and go up. Now, I know it's easy to be a moon boy on a green day. I, 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 I got it, all right? But again, are we in a position to transition from range to trend? So this is a classic example in one, okay? Now, there's resistance. There's the nine top. Should you buy it right this second? Probably not. Okay, but if you look at the weekly chart, okay, it's almost like this is a confirmed bottom and it's going the other way. So it means the next dip, or if you've been hodling it, just stick with it. Because if this is the dip, if this is the dip, if this little down day is the dip, Jesus, right? This whole market, I mean, the whole market is going to decide whether it's going to go from set up, dip, and then go to countdown. Now, of course, that's a big if. I've had my opinion. I've stated it. Okay, but we have to wait for the facts. Okay, Jasmine is back. Okay, let's check out Jasmine. Some wild shit right here, let me tell you. So this thing moons massively. And now it's in this like consolidation mode. Okay. So when you have something like this and they do this double top, all right, they may be doing some kind of consolidation formation, like a triangle or something like that, right? So you don't know where this low is going to stop. This may actually be a chart where you've got to go to like your 90 minute to find the tactical buy points. Okay. So right now it's making an eight. It may make a nine bottom. If it makes the nine bottom, then maybe that's where you take the shot. If you want to buy the dip. Okay. If this is still an uptrend, like every time you went down, like over here, and you got the nine bottom in this bottom left corner, that's where it went up. Okay. So my guess is people are going to come after this thing on the dip. Just, I mean, I think you can make a lot of money in ETH. Okay. You got to decide whether the, what they call the beta, all right, or the risk in these type of coins is worth it. Okay, QSP. By the way, folks, please hit that like button. Also, if you're new, welcome. Please subscribe to the channel. Okay, wow. Okay. So let's go to a daily chart. Okay, so is it a top or isn't it? All right, well, we're getting close to a DeMarc 9 top on the daily chart. So this does look like a case of extreme FOMO. But, okay, this thing has been retesting this level. I don't know. It, it's tough to read off this chart, but maybe it's like, let's call it today's open. All right. Even though people are selling this and taking their 100% gains, there seems to be dip buyers on the way down. So if you wind up with the green candlesticks, right, on top of this old set of highs, this may not be done. 
right? I mean, the question is, will people buy the dip? This is a little bit of a different case from what I've talked about before. But I mean, this, this matters, right? Like doing this type of work matters. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if the whole market starts acting like this, okay, you're going to want to start to get the feel for, okay, it moons here, but it comes back down and holds. Now, even though this doesn't have a lot of price history, look at the Williams moving average on the daily chart. In other words, it's up a lot, but there's positive upside momentum, right? So we're moving into this area where if we are, if, if, if the computer is right and I'm inclined to go with it because I talked to the guys who built it, if the computer signals are right and we're entering a market where we go from trend, I'm sorry, from channel or range to trend, then it pays to buy dips. Now, if you made a ton of money in this, should you take it? Probably take some of it. Always pay yourself if you're right. Okay. The spell chart, please. I would be happy to. Okay. Spell daily. Okay. Has not broken out yet above 0.045. Could be the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Okay. Once up moves start, that's what you look for. Spell weekly, same thing. To mark nine bottom last week, I started looking at weekly charts at the beginning of this week, not soon enough. Okay. So it's up and it's not up. It's up off the lows and everyone's like, oh, I can't buy it, right? What happens when people are afraid to buy it, right? Every time this thing went up, everyone wanted to buy it. I said, don't buy it. Every time it went down, everyone wanted to sell it. I said, don't sell it. Now it's up and I don't think anyone wants to buy it. I think people want to buy Cardano, but I don't think anybody wants to buy ETH. And I think nobody wants to buy Bitcoin, which is insane. I mean, yeah, I understand risk assets. There's a problem over there. NATO's talking about what happens if the Russians use battlefield nukes. I mean, there's not a lot of good rhetoric coming out out there. That's not a good situation. But that's why no one wants to buy it. That's why it's going up. Markets go up until, until you like it. <laughs> now, is spell in that category? I don't know. But if there was a fundamental reason why you liked spell, just wait. Because, you know, who knew about Jasmine? Who knew? Right. All of a sudden you just woke up and it was gone and people were selling it like it was nobody's business. Okay. Uh, hello from Bulgaria. Welcome. Okay. All right. Somebody's asking me about the private zoom meetings for token metrics. Those are once a week. Okay. Okay, somebody said, how can they learn about the numbers on the chart? Okay, here's the tutorial on the numbers on the chart. Okay, the 13s and the 9s, this may not be the best example. Let's go to the weekly. So the 13s and the 9s, okay, are signals that a certain set of conditions has been met. And that condition, that certain set of conditions, that 9 and that 13, means pay attention. Now there are other subtleties and there's a lot to DeMarc work. It's complicated. I bought the book. I'm still reading it. It's tough, but when you get nines and you get thirteens, I know what those mean. I think can mean it means pay attention, pay attention for a reversal or pay attention for trend continuation. I've seen this be miraculous. Like frankly, it has been throughout this shitty range. And I've seen this stuff break when you get monster uptrends, right? It's kind of a reversal based system, except for maybe that transition from one to nine with the dip and then one to 13. 
So it'll tell you, are we in a trend or are we in a range? So if the DeMarc topping signals on short-term charts aren't working, it's because the bullish signals on token metrics and our momentum indicators are turning bullish. As Steve J says, not financial advice. Kyber. Okay. Somebody's asking for ergo. Okay. So Kyber, a monstrous token metrics pick. Monstrous. Right. AI has been all over this all the way up. Period. End of story. Okay. 13 top on the weekly. Yikes. Okay. Now support or resistance was at $3 and 16 cents. So I guess if it's above $3 and 16 cents, they're still buying the dip. I mean, the trend is your friend. So I, you know, I'm not going to get off this boat, but I would tell you that you have to ask yourself, all right, so this thing has gone back to wherever it was, you know, from May of last year, will it explode through that price around $4. So if it goes through $4, then I guess it's going to move. Okay. Personally, I would take the money. I would take the money. Let's see what token metrics says. So token metrics love this. I mean, it absolutely loved it. I mean, so the grades, it still loves it, right? Because the grade loves momentum. So the, the momentum trade, you know, when token metrics stays on it, it stays on it. Okay. Just in case you want to see the power of these indicators. Okay. The bullish signal. I don't know if you can see this on the screen. The bullish signal in this coin. I don't know. Mid January. Now, yeah, you had to deal with some really crappy dips, but it never went bearish. It never went bearish. Let's go to the ratings page. You get a low dollar subscription and you can't see the other stuff that I just showed, but you can see this. Okay. This is the ratings page. So Kyber with a market cap of 204 still has a rank above 80. And there has been stuff that's mooned like maple. Okay. These things have been in the top for a while. Now, the thing that's got my attention is Elrond. Now, Elrond has gone up, okay? Okay, but look at this. It just got bullish. I mean, yes, you, you did get a little chopped up here, but when Elrond is getting out, it's getting out. That was November. And when Elrond's getting in, it's getting in. That was July. So whatever there is to like about Elrond, if you still like it and there's a catalyst, the way this thing has moved in the past and all of our indices are picking up on this, by the way, like this hasn't really done anything. This is why I'm so interested in it. This has done nothing. And if you go back over here to indices, right? And you go to say crypto.com. It's 27% Elrond. 27% of something that hasn't rallied much and can move a lot. All right, folks. I got, oh, somebody forgot Ergo, right? I got to do Ergo. I got to do it. The Ergo dude has been here, like, just, just pounding away. Wish I could hit the like button for you. Wish I could hit the like button for everybody who's watching. We got over 5K yesterday, people, easily. Okay, 5K, 5K views per stream. I want to thank every single person who watched it, every single person. You know, sometimes YouTubers try to keep you coming back by belittling you and telling you that you don't know anything. That's not true. And I'm not doing that. I'm not. I love you guys. I want you guys to make a shitload of money and be free. Okay, ERN. 
Okay, uh, a four-hour chart, not a lot going on. So let's try this. This is the 89-minute chart of ERN. Now, if you want to be long and bullish ERN, then I think the key level to watch is $6.18. If you can take that level out without taking out 521. So if it's above 521 and then it turns around and takes out 618, then you can start talking about $9. Sometimes when you get these spikes, it can come back Actually, let me adjust this. So maybe it's six six dollars and twelve cents. Six dollars and twelve cents. You take that out, it's good. All right, so let's let's sum up. The market is moving from range to trend. How do you know that? Because your mind doesn't want to accept it. When I talked about Bitcoin going to 47 three days ago, pff, no one listened. That's okay. Not this. I get it. It's been in the range for so long. I was the one who was blowing up, jumping up and down. Don't sell weakness or buy strength. But this is changing. So Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum especially. This is the time to use your imagination. In research, research, you get paid for imagination. So if it's still a range, well, then we get hosed. But if it's a trend, we win. And this could be the big chance. I thought this was like February-ish. This could be the big chance to make money in crypto. Between now, say, next two weeks. Right? Tokenmetrics.com. How's your coin doing? All right, folks. I got to go. Driftless, thank you. Taz. Okay, praying for the AVAX rally for you, all right? We all thank everybody for joining, okay? Subscribe to the channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've been here for a while, thank you. Tell your friends. Forward the stream. Tell people to check it out. If you're in Cardano Nation, don't go anywhere because we got better Cardano charts than anybody. This is your host, Bill Noble. I will see you tomorrow.